the richest black man in America, Robert Smith, thinks that the fourth industrial revolution presents tremendous opportunities to create wealth. But he also says that black people risk missing out on this massive opportunity unless we urgently address the digital and broadband divide in black communities. Well, is he right to sound off the alarm? Or is he overestimating the importance of broadband? But also, is he being overly dramatic? Once again, looking for racial injustice in places where it does not exist. Well, in this video, we will look at the reasons behind Robert Smith's statements. We'll also look at how bad the situation really is when it comes to broadband. And finally, we'll propose a way forward from Africa Killer's standpoint. Because as you know, this platform is not just about accusing, but advancing. So there you have it. Fasten your seatbelts. Let's dive in and let's get to work. Hello family, welcome to another edition of Afrikili. As a reminder, the word Afrikili is a contraction between the words Africa and Akili. Akili means intelligence in Swahili, which is the most spoken African language in Africa. So Afrikili stands for African Intelligence. Uh, if you're new to our platform, you can find out more by going on the website www.africili.com. And when you're on there, make sure you put in your email address so that you may get all the latest installment of our written blog, but also get more information on, on the platform. But also, you can find out more through our social media profiles on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. Lastly, if you like our content, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, but also share to others that might find value in what we're doing. So in today's episode, we will look at Robert Smith assertion. Robert Smith being the richest black man in America, who thinks that black people are on the verge of missing out on the fourth industrial revolution, which is the digital economy, unless we urgently address the digital broadband, the digital and broadband divide in black communities. Now his reason for making that assertion, well, he centers that around three reasons. Uh, first, he's saying that about 80% of HBCUs are broadband desert. Now, HBCU stands for historically black colleges and universities. He also says that there's a short shortage of software engineers. Uh, lastly, he's saying that there is a massive digital divide in black communities. So before we're looking at these assertions, uh, let me just mention that I actually came across all these statements while watching a, an episode of the Earn Your Leisure podcast which was dated from December 13, 2022. And so in that episode, the podcast host invited Robert Smith to discuss many different interesting topics going from private equity, wealth creation, HBCUs, etc., etc. In case you might not know who Robert Smith is, now he's the U.S. billionaire founder, CEO, and chairman of Vista Equity Partners. But also, uh, you might recall that in 2019, uh, he was prominently featured in the news because he, he made an address at Morehouse College, which is an HBCU. And uh, as he was addressing the graduating class from 2019, he said something that really caught everybody by surprise. He said that he would pay off the student loan of the entire graduating class, which was about 400 students. And so that was like a massive, massive surprising news. And so what I ended up following is that this promise eventually turned into the Student Freedom Initiative that provides financial aid to many black students uh, and serves a lot of HBCUs. But also it might be important to note that Robert Smith actually comes from a family of educators because both his parents had uh, PhDs. They were educators. And so as such, it's definitely not surprising that he directs his philanthropic initiatives to institutions of higher learning, like universities and, and so on. So... Another point I'd like to say is that alleviating student debt is also very important. Because, you know, when I was listening to that podcast, he, he made an interesting statement. Uh, so Robert Smith mentioned that throughout his research, he discovered that 60%, and that's 6 zero, 60% of the wealth in the black community, in the African-American community, is tied to servicing student loans and student debt. What that means is that 60% of the wealth that could go towards 
reinvesting in the community, uh, starting businesses, just creating more wealth actually is used to repaying the U.S. government. And so him addressing that and trying to alleviate that is very significant because in a country like the United States, where it is not uncommon for students to graduate from university with student debt going beyond $100,000, you know, it can take years to repay that. So it makes sense that a lot of, uh, of the wealth in the black community of folks who have gone through universities is tied to repaying student loans. You might recall a few years ago, you had uh, President Barack Obama and uh, First Lady Michelle Obama who had finally paid off their debt. And they were elated about it and, and made the communication, but also pointing out that it took so many years for them to kind of pay it off. So it's definitely significant that Robert Smith would address that part, which is a, a massive, massive burden for the black community. So let's move on to Robert Smith's assertion that bridging the digital divide by targeting especially HBCUs would go a long way in reducing the wealth gap, but also providing tremendous wealth creating opportunities in the black communities. And to do that, let's look at how bad exactly is the broadband situation in HBCUs. Well, if you are concerned with, I would say, equality, uh, equity, and so on, you, sh you should be shocked when you hear that 80% of HBCUs are broadband de desert. 80%. 80%. I mean, that that is a massive number because whether it's whether you're interested in advancing innovation or training future digital professional and considering that so many go through HBCUs, how can you equip the next generation of future professional in that sector when you're missing such an essential tool as broadband? And 80% is unfathomable. When it comes to HBCUs, I've heard different arguments, right? Some people might say, well, first of all, when it comes to training uh, digital developers, uh, software engineers, and so on, no big deal if it's not available through universities, because nowadays you can learn it yourself, right? People say, well, all you need is an internet connection, and you, you can get all the knowledge you want out there. It's just a matter of initiative. Okay, now, granted, there's a plethora of courses that are available online. You know, one can train himself, and, and there's certainly examples of individuals that are self-taught and that have become very successful in the digital economy. Nevertheless, institutional higher learning and universities still remain the best way to rigorously train a future professional in the, in the digital sector, the, the tech industry, and so on. Still remains. So universities are, are still very important. Now, I've also heard the argument, some people say, well, I mean, so, so what? No big deal if it's not available in HBCUs. You have many other universities. So why won't those students, you know, just leave HBCUs and, and go to universities where the resources, you know, broadband and so on are more available if they're really interested into that? And another point I would say is that uh, typically when I hear that argument, it's because people say, yeah, there, there aren't that many HBCUs anyways, so they're not really... That meaningful because you only have about 100 HBCUs today across the entire United States, which represents about 3% of all universities. You know, when I hear that, I would say, you know, that really is a misguided approach and it's underestimating the real importance of HBCUs for the black communities in the United States. Because you might think that 3% is a small number, but the impact is really meaningful. These institutions are real agents of change within the, the black community. And, and so just to kind of give you a few numbers here that might be of uh, interest to you. Uh, there is a report that came out in 2019. And so this was a report from McKinsey, uh, two institutions within you know McKinsey, the uh, international advisory uh, firm. And there was the uh, McKinsey Global Institute, that's the, the MGI, but also the McKinsey Institute for Black Economic Mobility, the BEM. Well, based on this 2019 report, of all the, the black students in the United States, 10% go through HBCUs. And also, 17% of all college degrees obtained by black students are obtained through HBCUs. 
17%. So that's very close to one fifth. It's almost one fifth. And that's, that's, that's a lot. But also now the very interesting and I would say relevant uh, stats here is that 24% of all STEM related uh, degrees obtained by black students are obtained through HBCUs. Okay, so STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math, which obviously is, is very relevant to the technology sector. So you would see that HBCUs still play a very significant role in the black community in educating black students. I think that HBCUs actually are an important representation, representation of the inventiveness, the creativity, the resilience, of black people that have historically refused to back down in the face of adversity. Because you have to remember here that HBCUs were created in a time that was highly segregated, where the United States was highly segregated, racism was at an all time, what was obviously the norm. And so black people were denied the opportunity to join colleges and universities. So what happened as a result is that black people in the United States created HBCUs to provide that opportunity for their students, for the uh, kids within their community to also be educated, for people within the community to be educated. And you've had prominent public figures that have gone through HBCUs. I mean, there's obviously uh, somebody who's very relevant to, say, for example, the uh, Black History Month that's about to begin in the United States. We have Dr. Martin Luther King, one of my personal heroes. Well, he was educated at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. And that's also the place where Robert Smith made the announcement to pay off uh, the student loan for all his graduating class. You also have the current vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris, who went to Howard University in uh, Washington, D.C. And so these universities have historically played a, a massive role and still are, because obviously Kamala Harris is recent history. We're not talking about ancient history here. And in a society where we put such a big premium on college education, because no matter how you look at it, yes, there's entrepreneurship, there's all sorts of opportunities, but colleges, like getting a college education, a university education, still remains one of the best ways to increase your chances to get a middle-class income. And so in a society where uh, colleges play such a key role, I mean, it is unfathomable that institutions like HBCUs that are so important in educated black students would lack such essential tools as broadband. Remember, 80% of HBCUs are desert, are broadband deserts. And staying on the, the idea of colleges playing a, an important role in creating a middle class, well, HBCUs, particularly since the 60s, have played one of the most important roles in creating a middle class in the African-American community. That same report from McKinsey that I mentioned earlier from 2019 says that graduates from HBCUs are 51% more likely to get into a higher income quintile, okay, 51% compared to students from uh, or graduates from non-HBCU uh, institutions. Now, granted, HBCUs serve a big chunk of students from uh, uh, low-income families, and so once you obtain a college degree, because college is so significant in, in allowing you to get a higher, or to get to a middle class, well, they have a bigger chance to get into a higher income quintile. So it makes sense that HBCUs would be so uh, important in allowing black students to get into the middle class. But we're talking about 51% here. So again, HBCUs are critical to the African-American and the, the black community in the United States. So all things considered, the fourth industrial revolution definitely presents tremendous opportunities, as Robert Smith stated. People that are able to design solutions, innovate, come up with ways just to help society transition from an analog world to a digital world, will be presented with fantastic opportunities to create wealth. So this is a massive wealth creation opportunities. And so there are two particular trends that are important here. The first trend is that the digital transformation is accelerating. 
I mean, just look around us. I mean, you're most likely also watching this. You are watching this on a digital platform. So there's no more argument that the digital transition across the world is accelerating. And the second important trend is that the demand for software developers, I mean, competent, qualified, capable software uh, developers will continue growing because right now there is a short shortage. So when you consider those two facts, the fact that the transition is accelerating, so opportunities will keep on coming, but also secondly, there's a shortage of developers, then it becomes unconscionable. Again, that HBCUs that play such a key role in training the next generation of black professionals, granted not all, but a big part of, of black professionals would lack such a necessary tool as broadband, like 80% of them. So because of all this, you know, Robert Smith was definitely not misguided in targeting HBCUs for his philanthropic initiatives. He was absolutely right because HBCU, as I've demonstrated for the last few minutes here, are important agents of change, not only important, but very impactful agent of change within uh, the black community in the United States. They definitely play a prominent role in helping reduce the wealth gap between black people in the United States and other communities, uh, wealth creation opportunities, economic advancement. Because I'll tell you what, as bad as the economic inequalities are today, as bad as the wealth gap is between the black community in the United States and other communities, the situation would have been even way worse if not for HBCUs that have played such a prominent role since the 60s in creating a black middle class in the United States. All right, so in all this, so what is our stance uh, as far as Africa? As you know, this platform, as I said before, is about advancing, not just accusing. But when you consider that finances or economic advancement is one of our pillars, because remember, our three pillars are uh, history, Pan-African history, Pan-African political action, and Pan-African uh, business, which includes economic advancement, well, we can only fully support the initiatives by Robert Smith because we believe that economic advancement is a key ingredient in helping the black community in the United States, in Africa and across the world to take ownership of its destiny. Historically, black people in the United States were prevented from fully participating in wealth created wealth creation opportunities, as is well documented, whether it's from the institution of slavery, uh, all the struggle during the, the civil rights movement in the 60s and so on, that is well documented. But today, all of us, me, even you who are watching me, all of us have the knowledge to allow us to invest into the next generation of uh, professional software developers, but even just in our communities, so that we can reverse past injustices and make sure that we maximize opportunities within our communities. As a matter of fact, I see it as a responsibility. But I would say that outside the United States, a lot of work also has to be done because you will see that no matter where you look, black people across the world are underrepresented when it comes to the tech industry. As a matter of fact, there's a report from Computer World, which looked at Europe, uh, countries like the UK. So if you look at the United Kingdom, for example, only 3% of the workforce in the tech sector is black, 3%. If we look at Africa, we still have a massive infrastructure gap that has to be closed for broadband to, to be expanded so that we can take full advantage of the fourth industrial revolution. However, when it comes to Africa, in one of our previous videos, uh, I mentioned that the ICT sector, the information and communication technology sector, was one of the most promising industries for doing business in Africa. So I would say following in the footsteps of Robert Smith or emulating his initiative, we're definitely well equipped to invest in the next generation of software developers. Because if we do everything we can, to maximize the participation of black people in the fourth industrial revolution, we will ensure that we maximize the opportunities for wealth creation, we will create economic advancement opportunities, 
and we will make sure that the wealth gap is closed globally. So in the United States, but also across the world. Because ultimately, when it's all said and done, whether it's about black people or not, it is my utmost conviction and belief that a more equitable world is the only way where we will maximize the potential of our planet and ensure the well-being of the entire humanity in equitable and just world. So there you have it. Before closing, I'd really like to thank you for following uh, this video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, share it. Uh, remember to go to our website, www.africhealy.com. Enter your email, because our blog entry might be interesting uh, to those of you who like reading, who prefer reading. And we have a bunch of articles on the website that you will find interesting. And also, remember to follow our, our social media profile, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. So can we really maximize the participation of black people in the fourth industrial revolution and create economic advance opportunities, reduce the, the wealth gap and reduce the global racial economic inequalities? Yes, we can with the right initiatives. And I believe that it will happen. It is possible. Well, until next time, Africa, African intelligence to change the image and destiny of Africa, but also its global Pan-African diaspora. Asante sana. Peace be with you. Africans.